Hey guys, check it out. This is the second installment of our car. You see in the outside, there's a link somewhere in screen. This time I'm going to show you the inside because although it looks quite standard from the outside, there's quite a few changes being done on the inside. Algeria, Tunisia, Mauritania, Libya. This car has been to places that we can only dream of going to. Unbelievable. It's a 93 model. I think he started building it straight away, which is a clue to why the color is maybe not quite modern, but this is very well done. A lot of insulation here. I think it's about an inch thick. And you can see there's not a lot of room space in here. It's kind of tight. So yeah, it might look a little bit ancient, but it's very well done. It's very neatly uh, integrated into the whole thing because this used to be a commercial. It was a three door commercial van. It's got no side windows at the top here. It's just blank panels. So they've installed two windows on each side. Um, it's got these slidey things, which blacks out the window completely. Above the windows, we have these nets. At the moment, they're not being used for their intended purpose because we're not sure exactly what their intended purpose was. They've made two boxes, actually identical, one on each side, so you can lift them out separately and take them out of the car, which is quite handy. So yeah, we've got a lot of space in here, a lot of height, a lot of depth, every piece of real estate is being used. On the side above the wheel arches we have boxes as well. We don't just camp all the time, we have to work as well and this car gets used a lot. So sometimes the car is just filled chock-a-block with people's linen from a changeover day. Uh, we do maintenance every now and then so we need the car to be have a, a, a good open uh, volume in the back. Um, that's why we can't set it up like uh, that wonderful camper van that we uh, showed the other day. And you can see they flip up. Uh, we've then utilized this according to how we go camping. So we put all of the stuff that we use the most in the front part. So you can see over here there's one uh, box missing and that's our tea set, which we've just had a cup of tea from. We have another one just now. We've got assorted things in here. All our camping gear, gas cooker there. We've got our eating utensils. You can see it's actually a repurposed uh, idea of a toolkit, but it works perfectly for keeping everything neat and tidy and you don't have rattling what you would in a normal cutlery drawer. So here we have an open space. I'm assuming it was for a fridge. This is the first little box. So yeah, it's a mess of tools at the moment because that's what we use it for. Under here is another space. This lives underneath there. This is one of the most important tools in the car. As you can see, it's well used. Up here we have a lot of other tools for our work as well, fixing things in houses. The most important tools for the car are these. As you know, the, the biggest problem with these cars is the clutch. Normally the master cylinder and the slave cylinder. So actually this is all we need to fix the car. They, they had this flat so you could sleep on it. Um, we, we can't be sure whether they had one big mattress that fit on top of that, but it would be very impractical to work with that. So it could have only been two sides of the, you know, uh, two single mattresses that maybe they lifted one up. I mean, if you're lying on here and you need something underneath, what do you do? It just seems crazy. So maybe, or well, maybe it was just one person. They had one mattress and then they were slided over to whichever side they needed. That's, uh, for, for two people, I find it a bit, uh, well, it doesn't work for us. And also this headspace for us is a huge problem. You know, sitting here. <laughs> really cramped. So that doesn't suit us. You know, if the roof popped up, then it would be kind of different, I think. That's better, isn't it? This is a nice little cupboard. I'm not sure what he used to put in here. I'm assuming it was his shirts that they could hang up. There's a little hook up here. You put a coat hanger on it and hang your shirts in there. They keep them crease free because when you're driving through the desert, you've got to look good. Pipes with a to clear out stuff, try and get dust out of the car, which is always a mission. That's for the tires. We've got some oil for the engine because it is using a bit of oil. This is the shower, which clips on the side of the car. We've got tie wraps. Don't ever leave home without them. Got another fire extinguisher that makes two, and then a first aid kit for if you need it. So I'm sure we're not using this little 
recovered to its full potential. But at the moment, this is working for us. And it keeps things out of the way and rattle free as well. And of course, you need a place to hang your hat. This is not a standard light, at least not from the Land Rover factory, as far as I'm concerned. But it's big, gives a lot of light because this is quite a dark finish inside. You need light at night. Up here, we have a little ventilation flap. It's even got a little mosquito mesh, mesh which has just come off in my hand. <laughs> On the left hand side, it's a nice uh, use uh, of the area in the car because this area behind the rear wheel normally doesn't get used, right? Um, we might use this for something else. We're going to sort out all the tools, put them all in one place, and maybe use this for gas bottles or something else. Here is a 12 volt connection. A box of tea fits right under here, which might be handy for you to know. This switch is for the compressor. And the compressor line clips in here on the other side of the car, which bizarrely, uh, I don't know, ergonomically that doesn't make sense. So this is a novelty in a Defender with three front seats. I'm sure you haven't seen this before. More tools. You never know what you're going to be looking at, so you have to have one of these as well. You have no idea how many people I have jump-started with this car. Which is uh, always a good thing with a Land Rover. In fact, people always approach us when we are camping on a campsite. And if they need something, they need a screwdriver or a hammer, they come to us. Because they probably know Land Rover, he's got everything on board. So they're always happy to help. So the reason these things are forward is for this flap here. This creates a nice long bed which is long enough for me to lie down. I'm six foot two and it's pretty comfortable already. So I can understand the thinking why they did this. There, is, there was one here as well which folded up over here which we've taken out for the moment because we're not really using it as its intended purpose. But that's the reason for leveling it out here so you can get a nice flat bed. And in here, we have our camping gas cooker, the pan, extension leads. On the other side, you'll see the reason why the boxes are this height. And I'm assuming that was the reason for that. So yeah, it's a bit of space, a lot of interior space, keeps it nice and flat and clean inside the car and all your clutter gets hidden away inside the boxes, which is nice. On this side, you can see what some people might think. They have actually asked us if this is air conditioning. And in fact, no. <laughs> is it on? No kidding. That's actually a light. It's a reading light. Above it is the speaker for the radio, which is now mounted above the rearview mirror. On the driver's side, you have the same. A light, the speaker above it. And above that is the speaker for the two-way radio. Uh, the CB radio, the VHF, UHF, used to sit in here, but they've taken that out, so at the moment we don't have any way of communicating. This is also not a standard feature. This is put in afterwards. It's actually in the perfect position if you're in the passenger seat, right by your head, by your right ear, to hang on while you're rolling around in the corners. And uh, it's nicely done, very sturdy. We find a lot of these green pouches hiding in the car. And obviously, since we don't know the history of it, we've had to figure it all out. This one is fairly self-evident, although it has been handmade, which is very nicely done. This fits on the windscreen. I'll put half of it up like that. I think it's also thermally very good, especially if it gets quite cold in the desert at night. So that's very well done. There are two of these in the car. With Velcro fittings on them. And I think you can figure out the shape of it. It's on there. And I can actually close the door. And that's thanks to the famous panel gaps that are a Defender trademark, of course.
Well, check this out. I'm sure you can figure this one out as well. Got a couple of hooks here. <coughs> Hook it on there. There's Velcro here. And they put Velcro on the inside of the A-pillar. So, there you go. The whole car can get blacked out, you sleep inside in peace, and you can sleep late in the morning, even in the desert. <laughs> in the front, it's fairly standard. I'm sure you can recognize the upholstery, which is from a 93 Defender. Actually, it's not too bad. The seat doesn't have as much padding as a, as a Puma does, but that's a good thing because it gives you more leg room. I'm sure you're wondering what's under here. Cables for the converter. You might be expecting two batteries, but there's just one. I think there was another battery there. There is space and there's padding as well. But under here we have a Optima Blue Top, which is very good. It's been used a lot of times to jumpstart other cars, and that's its main function really. Charging the converter to give you battery for the camera that's filming us now keeping our beer cold and jump-starting other cars. On the plus side we have a heater that actually works, which for us is a novel idea. This switch here, I have no idea what this is supposed to do. Over here there's a standard interior light hazard switch. This switch actually runs the pump to pump diesel from the auxiliary tank, which is 50 liters just behind the passenger seat, to the main tank, which is now 110 liters, which we've shown you in the previous video. So that doesn't really get used because we don't use that extra tank. Hiding here is a very dangerous switch. This controls the winch on the front. If you flick it, the winch will start rolling. And they've covered it with a little cover to keep it away, but if you, if you flick it by mistake, I'm sure you will tear the front bumper off the car. So it's not a very good solution, but it's nice to have it there anyway. The rest of the car is fairly standard. The cigarette lighter charger doesn't really work that well. It's a 50-50 if you're gonna get something charged. The clock has never told the right time, maybe twice a day. This, I'm not sure, I'm thinking it might have been a microphone for the two-way radio. And the rest are just things we normally use. A little pen light torch, a knife, Leatherman. Well guys, if you enjoyed watching this, give us a like down below. Share your comments. Is this your idea of a perfect overlander? Is this your idea of a perfect way a defender is being set up? Give us your comments, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a like if you enjoyed watching this and we'll see you next time. Ciao. That's thanks to the panel gaps that are famously uh, Defender's... Uh... Trademark. How can I say that better? Trademark. Trademark. <gasps> ah, okay, don't do that one. <laughs> if you like this video, enjoyed what you watch, no.